Okay, this video I'm going to show you about troubleshooting a contactor you typically see used in an HVAC unit to uh, control the, the turning on and off of a compressor. Um, so I got a little test jig set up here. I've got 240 volts coming into the top of the contactor. Out the bottom side of the contactor I've got it hooked up to a 240 volt rated fan to kind of simulate the compressor. Uh, then I've also got a 240 volt to 24 volt uh, transformer that I'm controlling the output of to switch the contactor on and off just to kind of simulate it. So what I'm going to do is turn the breaker on now. First I'm going to take my jewelry off my hand. Okay, the breaker's on right now, so we're going to have 120 volts on each phase coming into the uh, the line side of the contactor. So we'll just check that. Yep, approximately 120 and approximately 120. So 120 plus 120 gives you your 240 volt supply. So this contactor is actually faulty, and I'm going to show you um, why and a way to troubleshoot to figure out the uh, or diagnose the problem. So I'm going to turn it on. You can hear the coil buzzing in the contactor. That's because it's magnetically, uh, it's an electrical magnet uh, pulling in the uh, contacts. Sometimes if you turn them on and off you can get them a bit quieter. That's not bad. So with the contactor pulled in, I've got my, my 240 volts or 120 volts on each phase coming into the top. Now we've bridged the gap and it should be turning on my fan, but you can see that my fan isn't turning on. So you're going to take a couple of measurements here. And I'm going to show you where people sometimes get a little bit confused with this measurement because it's kind of misleading. So coming in, I've got approximately 120 and on my other phase I've got 120. That's where you get your 240. Now on the bottom side of the contactor, uh, or in your case in the video on the top side, uh, we've got the, the fan load, but the fan's not turning on, so in theory you'd think there's no power getting to it. But if you measure here, on the first phase you're getting 120, and you measure the second phase, and you're getting 120 again. So that's kind of strange, because you measured the same 120 on both sides at the top, you're measuring it on both sides on the bottom, then why isn't the fan turning on? Well, the issue is, is that you're actually not getting your 240 volts. So you can see on the incoming, you've got 240 volts, your 120 plus 120. But on the outgoing to the fan, you've got, what is that? 23 volts, which is nothing. It's basically zero voltage. This is probably just a trickle voltage coming through something. Um, so you can disregard it, just consider it zero volts. So here's the issue. One of these contacts is bad on this contactor. Usually it happens when, uh, you get arcing which causes pitting on the contact surface or it's just carbon buildup that it's gotten to the point where it actually insulates the connection uh, and it's not allowing current to flow through the fan and turn it on. So I'm going to show you how you can quickly fix that issue. So first thing you got to do is turn off your contactor and I'm also going to turn off the breaker. Okay the breaker's off, I'm just going to confirm it because it's always uh, better to be safe than sorry and you've got zero volts on that, so perfect. So here's what you can do. You can take um, some needle nose, and maybe a small slot driver. And the way these uh, contactors work, there's actually spring-loaded contact surfaces in here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'll see if I can show you it. Um, so when you look here, there's actually a spring-loaded contact surface that plunges in and down, and that's what makes contact uh, to allow energy to flow through. These are actually removable, so you can take them out and take some sandpaper to them to clean up the contact surface. And what you got to do is first take like a slot driver and kind of tip the spring out of place, out the top. Just make sure it doesn't get away from you or you'll be searching the ground looking for it, wishing you'd never taken the spring out. So I got the spring out. You can see it right there. I'm just going to put that off to the side so we don't lose it. Now the contact, what you need to do is you need to take a, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, go in here, and then you have to rotate it 90 degrees. And that allows you to slide the contact out of the holder. So now I've got my contact surface out. It's out of the holder. And what you can do now is you uh, take some sandpaper, 
I'll show you the contact up close. If you look closely at it, hopefully it shows up, you can see it's kind of charred, burnt. Uh, looks like there's probably some pitting on it also. Uh, so you take some sandpaper and just rub that contact on there around a little bit to take off that layer, take off the layer of carbon. And then when you look at it again, you can see the bright metal surfaces now. So that, that contact surface is good to go. So now what you do is you take your needle nose pliers again and at a 90 degree angle slide that contact surface back into the contactor and then rotate to put it back in place. Then you got to put the spring back in. The spring can be a little bit tricky because uh, sometimes it'll spring away from you and then you're searching the ground. But I've found that if you sneak the top side in first and then sneak the bottom in behind, uh, it's a lot easier than if you tried to sneak the bottom in first and then sneak the top in after. And you can see I've got the spring back in place now. So right about in here is where the spring is. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it might be a little bit dark, but anyways, that, that spring is what keeps tension when this contactor goes in and out to close the, uh, the contacts. So now that we've got it sanded up, my fan should turn on when I turn uh, the breaker back on, or after I switch the switch. So I've got the breaker on now, and just to confirm, let's take a voltage measurement from phase to phase, and we got 240 volts. So this time, now that I've cleaned up my contact surfaces, I'm willing to bet that when I flick the switch on, that fan's going to turn on, which it just did. So there you go. A simple piece of sandpaper can save you um, a lot of hassle if you know how to identify the problem. Thanks for watching.